Hi, I'm Lynn Langett. Welcome to a six-part screencast series using the Google Cloud for Developers. In this first part, we're going to just explore what services and solutions are available through the Google Cloud. You can think of it as kind of a gentle introduction. So let's get started. Before we do that, to tell you a little bit about my background, I am working now as an independent contractor. I'm doing mostly architecture and um, deployments of cloud and big data, and I'm working across various vendor clouds, doing work with Azure, Amazon, Google, Rackspace, and others. For my technical education work, Google has recognized me for the past two years and designated me as a Google Cloud Developer Expert. I have done uh, work for education for Amazon, um, and I've also done work for MongoDB. I'm a MongoDB master. I'm also a Cloudera certified trainer for MapReduce. I also previously worked at Microsoft for four years, and due to my community education work for SQL Server, I'm an MVP for Microsoft. So let me tell you a little bit about this series so you can understand um, what my intent is and figure out which parts you uh, will find meaningful. So the series will be delivered in six parts on YouTube. And this first part is designed as a gentle introduction to the cloud services that Google has available, assuming that you have no knowledge. So if you've worked with it a little bit, you can skip to the other parts. Now I'll be doing this throughout this month. So again, I'm just recording the first part. And as the others come online, you might just want to subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you're uh, uh, you know, anticipating some of these. The screencast series will also include uh, demo code and code samples that I'll put up on GitHub. Um, and in most cases, I'm going to take Google samples and modify them. That's what I did in the past when I wrote a course about this because I think it's the simplest way to understand. I usually actually make the, the samples simpler. And sometimes there's a couple changes that I want to make just because of things I want to show. So just so you can understand what the content will be, this is, this is a conceptual overview. The next part will be using the web consoles to spin up services. The third part will be understanding billing. The fourth part will be using the command line tools. Um, and the fifth part will be probably the longest part. That will be an introduction to programming the cloud APIs with Java. Now there are other languages, but I happen to use Java, so that's what I'm going to show in the series. And the last part will be uh, learning more next steps. Now, if you follow my online education work, you might know that I did a series this time last year on the Google Cloud, and the reason I'm redoing it is because there's been a number of new services and enhancements announced, and I want to um, keep everybody up on it. Um, actually, it helps me to uh, do a series because I, I have to keep up to present it to you, and I found in preparing for this, there's actually quite a lot of um, change over the past year, so hopefully this will help you out. So we're going to start by just looking at what the Google Cloud Platform is. Because they are one of the newer players on the block in the world of the cloud, we all know that the market leader is Amazon. I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to Amazon because if you, like me, are already working on the cloud, the chances are high that you're working on Amazon. And I just find it useful as a point of reference to say this is like that on Amazon. Now that being said, uh, there are services that Google has that are unique and not available on Amazon or other providers, and I'll point those out as well. But I just I like to frame it up that way because I think it's easier for most of us that have been working on the cloud to uh, do comparisons. So in a nutshell, what is the Google Cloud? Um, and this is a picture that was published in Wired Magazine out of um, their beautiful data, one of their data, data centers. And it really is the ability to run your cloud infrastructure on Google's uh, services. And uh, you know, don't have to explain to anyone the scale that uh, Google's core services are able to run on. So that's one of the most compelling and one of the reasons that I personally got interested in, in the services. So in, in a nutshell, what you're looking at is virtual machines running Linux plus other services that are, that are running on Google's in infrastructure. Another thing I'll tell you right in the front is the cost versus performance has been a really positive aspect for me. The performance has been astounding, and the cost has been um, comparable or even less than some of the other competitors. Now, as we get into the implementation details, you'll see some of the some of the um, the other uh, areas that we need to take a look at. And, and what I mean by that is because this is a newer cloud, there, sometimes it's it's more difficult to use the tools and understand the programming APIs, and that's why I'm doing the series. So hopefully that helps you out. But in a nutshell, you're running your services on Google's infrastructure. So again, high level, most cloud implementations have this sort of layout, and so does Google. So there's offerings around compute that you select, offerings, so virtual machines, and then 
that you fully own infrastructure as a service or uh, managed, partially managed, so platform as a service where you host your websites. There are offerings around storage, and it goes the gamut from just NoSQL buckets all the way up to relational data stores up to, and up and beyond, basically. So there are, are many options in storage. And another really interesting aspect of Google's cloud is uh, they have a number of services that are relatively unique, such as Google Translate, um, the Prediction API, uh, that make their offer interesting and, in some cases, compelling, depending on your particular use case. So the starting point for many people on the cloud is virtual machines. So we're going to start there with Google's cloud as well. So recent uh, update to their services, their virtual machines, which are called Google Compute Engine, went what's called GA or general availability. So came out of beta. And this has been in the past quarter of this year. This is, I'm recording this in, Jan in uh, January 2014. So uh, their big competitors, of course, are Amazon EC2, um, uh, Azure, Azure VMs, and then Rackspace and, and others. So uh, as I go through and talk about this, I'm going to point out some differences between GCE and EC2 because as architects, I think that that's important for us to, to understand. So we'll be taking a pretty in-depth look um, at the um, GCE service. So just to drill down, and this comes from Google's marketing, but it is accurate and it's a good place for us to, to start. Um, GCE is infrastructure, so it's you um, own the VM, basically. Now one of the the situations with this is this is Linux only at this time. Now you can use their uh, images or you can create your own image, but it is Linux only. And uh, once you create it, then you are, you know, root on that particular um, instance. So you are working with the Google network. Um, they have by the minute billing. Um, they are um, advertised their green data centers. They have quite a lot of integration with partners already, and I will show that when we get into some of the, the tooling integration, where if you don't want to work with Google's tools or Google's APIs, you can actually um, use partner consoles, which has been a good solution for some of my situations. Uh, obviously, they have a high focus on security. Uh, fast and easy provisioning. Boy, fast should be a huge word on this marketing slide because I am astounded at how quickly these VMs spin up. And you'll see it when we go to demonstrate, but there is no comparison that I've seen with any other vendor. And for certain types of workloads, um, some of you may know that I do work with big data and batch processing. Um, this can be a very, very compelling reason to take a look at Google's cloud, large and powerful disks and load balancing. So the other key pillar of Google's cloud service is App Engine, and this is websites hosted on Google's cloud, so partially managed. Um, it also now can be backends or services, so you can think of this like uh, Azure websites or, or Azure web and worker roles kind of thing, or Elastic Beanstalk for Amazon. Um, personally, I've used Heroku to spin up um, sites really quickly, so there's a lot of um, other players out in this space as well. So. Um, this is the Google App Engine. This has been general availability for quite a while, and this is actually how I got started with the Google Cloud. So as I go along and um, show uh, my listeners about App Engine, I'll talk about my um, production implementation, the first one that I did a couple of years ago now. So again, uh, this is from Google, uh, Platform as a Service. The concept here is you get to uh, just deploy your uh, app or your service on their infrastructure and they have all these sort of common utility applications available for you so you don't have to write them. So your queues, memcache. Um, one of the other things that's really significant about um, this offering is auto scaling. So um, the concept is that the app will scale um, based on need um, on Google's infrastructure, so nearly infinite and you won't have to manage scaling, which for certain types of apps, um, very bursty kind of apps, apps that have um, you know, uh, peaks and spikes, is a very, very interesting uh, use case. Um, again, another uh, thing about this, I found it's really, really easy to get in and start it and try it out with um, no charges whatsoever, which is different than some of the other vendors. Um, also, I happen to run my nonprofit on App Engine, and um, I have some uh, pretty good monitoring on it, but I keep the charges very, very minimal because the cost is really reasonable for the performance. So we'll be taking a look at App Engine. 
So if you put these two together, Compute Engine and App Engine, then there are a core set of services. You can kind of think of it in layers. These are the services most commonly used, and there are some also some other services and APIs that you can interact with, um, but these are the core ones. So uh, they're listed down here, and they mostly have to do with data. So there's a service called BigQuery, which is Query as a Service. It's a super powerful, um, astoundingly fast. It's a new paradigm, so kind of dif difficult for people to, to understand, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. Um, Cloud Data Store. Uh, Cloud SQL, Cloud Storage, so different data options, and then commonly used because of the uniqueness and the power, our Prediction API and our Translate API. So this gets us started thinking about the services. Now as we're started, we're probably going to want to try them out. So um, the first point is to go and find where they are. So we're going to go out to this site, and this is a new updated site. Google has been trying to pull their documentation together. One of the challenges in the past has been each team kind of had a separate area and a separate set of um, documentation. It made it kind of hard to use, and Google is finally following the lead of Amazon and uh, Microsoft and pulling together unified documentation and unified consoles. They are in transition as of this recording, so you're going to see some of the old and some of the new, but I'll, I'll, I'll take you over to the new so you can kind of see where, where that's going. So I'm going to switch over and show you what uh, this looks like at this point. So here we are at Google's main site, uh, cloud.google.com, and we're on the Google Cloud platform here. And I am logged on already, so you can see it says sign out. So I'm logged on with my uh, Gmail account. And you can see that it they're advertising that Compute Engine is generally available here. And if I want to take a look at the products, it pretty much follows what I've said. Now, to get started, you can see we have features, pricing, and documentation. So, um, and then here's storage and big data and services. Another one that they just added is cloud endpoints. So we'll be taking a look at that. And then you can also get the developer tools. We'll be working with the cloud plugin for Eclipse. So if you're gonna be following along, you're gonna wanna um, grab that. Um, they have a, play, a playground, something called push to deploy, and if you're an Android developer, they have a new um, ID called Android Studio. So it is kind of nicely done on this page. So just to give you a preview of what the rest is going to look like here, um, if I go and say go to my console, this is their web console, and uh, you can see we'll be working with a number of projects, and uh, this is you know somewhat analogous to the AWS web console or the Azure console. It's a little simpler, but um, this is where we'll be working starting in the um, next section of the screencast. Now the other thing to get started is you just want to click uh, try it now. And literally it will spin a project up for you. Now uh, one of the things when we talk about billing is there's an incentive for people to get started. There's a billing credit, I think it's a $1,000 um, credit. So on the billing section, which should be section three, I'll uh, show you how to set that up and I'll try to get that recorded quick like so that you can um, get started with this. All right, one of the things that uh, is particularly interesting to me about all cloud implementations is how data is handled, because you may know, again, from my education work that I do a lot in big data as well. So um, one of the aspects of maturity that I've seen with the Google, Google Cloud over the past uh, year is the maturity around the data offering. So this is just, again, from their documentation showing that with Google App Engine, you have basically uh, four different choices for data. Now, because Google's cloud is evolving, uh, one of the things that I found tricky, and I just wanted to explain it to everybody here, is they, don't, they have different words for beta. Um, so basically, I'm going to give you the Google terminology for um, beta because I think it is important. So GA uh, for their uh, services means generally available, means it's production quality. Um, another aspect of working with the Google Cloud is they generally develop the features first in Python. Um, and if you're a Python developer, great, rock on, go for it. I'm more of a Java developer. Um, they've done a really good job bringing their features up to parity over the, the past year, um, and they're almost there. Uh, they started language support for PHP in the middle of last year, so not all the features are available there, but they're again working on that, and then they have their language Go as well. So the second uh, way a feature can be categorized is preview, and I'm going to give you an example of this with App Engine in just a sec, but preview, um, as they say, the feature will become general availability, and they have two kinds of preview. Regular preview, anybody can get it. Limited preview is request only, so you just send them an email and you generally will get um, access to the feature. 
So those are usually okay for production because um, they're generally going to become GA. Experimental, very important you understand, features may become GA and they might not. So if you try those out, those are truly, you know, things that are just being explored and they may or may not make it to GA. Um, there's two kinds of experimental. There's a one kind where anybody can try it and then they, Google has uh, a, a designation called trusted tester and uh, you apply to be a trusted tester. Sometimes you have to sign an NDA. And again, you're involved in the early product um, feedback cycle if you're a trusted tester for certain products. And then just to be complete, there are some third party provided um, features as well. Some have fees, some are free to try. I've done a lot of work with um, companies that uh, provide basically wrappers and consoles for Google Compute Engine. So uh, we'll be working with, for example, WriteScale and maybe Scalar and salt stack is another one. So um, just gives you kind of the menu. Now to apply this to reality, we're gonna just, I'll just take you over to um, the current documentation for Google App Engine and I'll show you um, how you look at these features. So here I am in the Google Developers documentation for App Engine and I'm on the features page. And again, there's a standard layout to the documentation. I'm you know making this screencast series with the assumption that you're new to Google development world. If you've developed an Android or something, then you're uh, used to this sort of documentation layout. But if you're like me and you come from Amazon and Microsoft, then everybody's documentation is slightly different. And, you know, it is critical to be able to read it. So basically, this is sort of the layout. You have the product and then you have the languages and then you have, you know, a quick start. Um, you have tutorials. Um, you have your console. Now here, specifically to what I was just talking about, here's the App Engine features. And you can see that this shows which languages, and here's the SDKs. Then there's the set of the generally available features by type, so data storage, for example. And here's an example of, we were just talking about memcache, so in memory, that's available in any language. But if you want the blob store, that's not yet available in PHP. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. That was very tricky for me to get my head around. It might seem really basic, but I'm just trying to let you um, go a little bit faster than when I uh, ramped up on this. Uh, then we have communications, process management, computation. Here's the back end feature that I talked about, which is somewhat analogous to like an Azure service. Um, and then here's preview features. So you can see Google Cloud SQL is a preview feature right now. And here's experimental features. These are the ones that may or may not make it to GA. Um, one that I'm interested in, and I might, depends on how much time I have, I might put it in the series, is MapReduce. That they actually have a MapReduce implementation that was actually sort of news to me as I was preparing for this. And then here's some third party that are associated with App Engine. So they have SendGrid and um, Twilio, I think it is, a voice SMS. I've not used that one. But that gives you kind of a sense of how these features work. Um, and hopefully that helps you out when you're deciding which features to use for your particular implementation. So like I said, in the next section, we're going to go into the web console and I'm going to demonstrate how to spin up Google App Engine instances, Compute Engine instances, and um, probably work with a little bit of BigQuery, um, possibly uh, Cloud SQL as well, just to give you some sense for the data consoles. Um, and that will be the focus of that one. Then the series beyond that, I will show you billing, including the, um, the free tier so you can get started, then command line programming, and then learning more. As you may or may not know, in addition to being a big data and cloud architect, I am the co-founder of a nonprofit. I very much believe that we need to help our kids be ready for the technologies that are coming down the road. And the way that we start is we teach them how to program. So to that end, I have this nonprofit called teachingkidsprogramming.org where you can get free courseware in Java, Small Basic, or C Sharp on uh, Pluralsight that is designed for you to use to teach a kid uh, ages 10 and up how to program. So uh, do take the time. Um, it's, a, it's on us basically to teach the next generation. So to wrap up this first section, if you want to um, continue to learn more, follow me on YouTube and you'll get notified when I update. Um, I'm hoping to get this series done uh, in January. Follow me on Twitter. Um, also, I am uh, working as a consultant. I'm pretty booked up right now, but if you think it would be a match for 
um, what you're doing in your company, reach out to me. Also, if you do have a Pluralsight subscription and you want to listen to the original series on this that I did last year, because there's still a lot of relevance to it. It's about four or five hours of courseware. Um, you can uh, go ahead and do that. That is a subscription service, so you'd have to either get a trial or actually buy a subscription. And they literally have hundreds of courses there, so it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, I'm Lynn Langett for All Things Data. Have a great day, and I'll uh, keep learning, including the Google Cloud.